If you're watching this video, then you probably have gone through this process of trying to figure out how to use your Obsidian notes in terms of links, folders, no links, no folders, links, but only a few folders, or folders and only a few links. There are a whole slew of videos telling you about the right way, the wrong way, and just not really describing any way. So I wanted to show you a video where I share my personal organization process for keeping my notes organized after transition from Evernote and OneNote and finally to Obsidian. My name is Georgiana and on this channel you find videos to help you with productivity, confidence, and just getting through life with as little friction as possible, except when necessary because sometimes a little friction is a good thing. So let's dive into it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a few things. First, I'm gonna show you the way that I capture ideas, the way that I go through my day with my usual workflow. I actually have a two system process for capturing notes. I use a combination of OneNote and Obsidian. For me, it was very important to distinguish what type of notes I was gonna use in each program because each program is great in their own way at different things, but there are things that either program doesn't do. So usually at the beginning of the day, this is where I start. This is the first page. This is what I open up as soon as I get to my desk. And I'll be honest with you, there are days where I am not at my desk and I'll open something similar on my phone, but this is my start page. This is my planner page. This is something that I created myself. You don't have to have anything as intricate, but I am a person who is coming from a, a physical planner and I just wanted to keep something that was as close to that as possible. The benefit of having a digital planner is that I don't have to have an actual notebook. So this was what used to be an open overlay of my planner pages. So for this layout, I just slid the rings over to the left so that I could write straight across. This side would be the left side of the Boss Agenda Planner and then this is a modified version of the my right page on a boss agenda planner. So the only thing that I changed for this is in the actual planner, the note section is the top half of the page, but one of the benefits, and here's the first reason why I love OneNote. With OneNote, you do have this unlimited page. So you can keep as much as you want anywhere. You just go and go and go and scroll and scroll and scroll as far in or out as you want. The other thing that is important to me is that I write with a pen. There are times where I am copying information and it's just easy for me to type. And there are times where an idea comes up that I just need to jot down. And my inclination is to go for my pen. And I wanted to remove as much friction as possible because I find if I am in the mood to brainstorm or draw or sketch something, it's so much easier for me to just pick up the pen and go and, you know, just draw whatever it is that I need. Um, sometimes I need to just brainstorm and get ideas out on the paper um, instead of looking for a piece of paper and then trying to figure out where I put that note later on I capture it all here on my daily page so I begin my day with my morning gratitude writing out my goals yes I do that every day and then I pick my top three priorities for the day I might begin by going to my weekly page and thinking about what I want to you know, work on for the week. I also will look at my Google Calendar and if I haven't already, I'll populate any appointments or meetings, anything that I need to here in the, the schedule list. And then I will take notes on the right. And then if I need more note space, I'll just keep going further and further and further out to the right as I can. So what's great about this is I can capture my thoughts freely, either by type or by handwriting. Sometimes I'll just put like um, random and then I can either draw or write, doodle, whatever it is right here. So that's the first area of where I capture notes. Now, everything that goes into OneNote is what I consider a permanent but fleeting note. I keep an archive just like I would a paper planner and I treat it just like I would a notebook. Most of the work that I do is at my desk, but one of the benefits of OneNote is that I can, if I want to, work on my phone and add information to my phone. So what that looks like is in OneNote, I have it set up, automatically save notes to my fleeting notes area. So if I need a note, I just start a new page. And if I wanted to, I can just jot a random note down. Sometimes I'll even open the voice capture and convert my voice into a note. This is really handy because a lot of my ideas come to me while I'm driving <laughs> or 
doing dishes or doing something where I can't actually type. Then once I've captured the note in OneNote, I'll close that, head over to the actual OneNote file, hit sync, and come into my fleeting notes area where there's my work. And then I can just copy it, go back into my notes and paste it. So that's sort of my workflow for capturing notes. I'll just put everything that I want into OneNote, one off, not edited, not tweaked. I don't really care about how it looks or how organized it is. OneNote has really become a place for me to just capture my ideas, put them out and sort of archive. It's very much like a, a planner, a notebook, a journal, an agenda, all in one. Uh, so the th second thing that I do is appointments and meeting notes. So I use Google Calendar as my main appointment book. So any meeting or appointment, um, class, workshop, whatever I have goes into my Google Calendar. And then when I come to my daily planner, I can write, I can make bullet points and I'll usually link this back because there are times where for the most part, the meeting is right here on this page. But sometimes the meeting, if I have multiple meetings or um, if I, I need to take up more space, I might have a meeting here with Joshua. I might have meeting notes here with Sarah. And I wanna make sure that I don't, I spend as little time as possible looking for notes. Sometimes if it's a recurring meeting that I have, um, a meeting that I have often like with my coach or a client, I wouldn't keep those notes here on the daily planner. Those notes would actually exist in that client profile. So this is where I, I keep my quick meeting notes. And what I'll do, then do is I will just copy the link to the paragraph, come over here, say link, paste the link to the paragraph. And now this becomes a hot link. So when I click on it from my calendar, it'll all, always jump over to here. So you'll see where it's really beneficial here with meeting with Sarah, Sarah, copy link to paragraph, come back to my table. Let's say that meeting with Sarah was at 2 p.m. Now, and I'll just zoom in so you can see how well this worked over here. When I click meetings with Sarah, it'll automatically jump me to meeting with Sarah. So for me, it's easier for me to be in flow and in a stream of thought. So OneNote has become my information capture system. I'm concerned less about how the information looks and I can just focus on capturing the information. The next item that has been really helpful for me with OneNote is oftentimes when I'm working, I will switch from the view to a new docked window. And in that docked window, I'll have that same column. So just as wide as that little note section, and I'll keep that on the right of my workspace. So if I am working in other notes, I can have my main note here, and then I can have another thing that I'm working on over here. And this window will always stay on top. If I try to maximize another note or another program, another app, another tool, it'll only fit within this window. And then I find that most of the time, a lot of the ideas that interrupt my workflow during the day that I think are important, if I allow myself, I'll jump into Chrome, I'll do the search and I'll get lost going down a rabbit hole for a random thing. Instead of going into another program, I would just then come into my little note here and I would say, order skin so soft. And I'll just put that there. And that way I can continue my work. My concentration flow has improved so much. My focus is has become so much better because I'm not stopping to squirrel brain and figure out every little thing at, you know, any time that it, it pops up into my mind. It goes in the note here on the side. If I have a question, if I have a to-do, um, if I have, you know, whatever comes up, I can just put it here on this list and come back to it later. Now, once I'm done with the day or my meetings, then I decide what items want to get into my Zetto casting. On the left-hand side, you'll see that I have a very simple folder system that is basically numbered at the top, at the highest level, so that they're in the order that I want them to be. So you'll see on the left-hand side, I have six um, categories. Most important thing is to do what works for you. I think it's really important that you use a system that helps you remember things. So for my first category, for me, it's my fleeting notes because these are notes where if I, you know, when I first come in and I need to just get an idea down, I don't want to have to dive into any of these things. I just want it to be at the, there at the top so I can open it up, create the note, get it down on paper, again, removing as much friction as possible. 
to, to getting the note down. Followed by that, I have my directories because other than capturing notes quickly, the other thing that I wanna be able to do easily is access like an overall view of my notes. Right now I'm sort of in the beginning of my note taking system so I can see most of my notes in the left hand panel but I know and I'm already beginning to see that as my, my notes start to grow I want to have a, a place where I can sort and arrange and keep all of the things sort of you know easy touch. It's like an overall view of my notes. Right now I'm sort of in the beginning of my note taking system so I can see most of my notes in the left hand panel but I know and I'm already beginning to see that as my, my notes start to grow I want to have a, a place where I can sort and arrange and keep all of the things sort of you know easy touch. So if you look at Nick Milo's access folder method he begins with an atlas which is basically your your maps of content your directories now it sounds all well and good in his naming system and i don't know if he he leveraged that so that the accss comes in the order that he wanted to but for me i don't want to think about what is an atlas <laughs> or what does the atlas mean it's the directory it's where i find my maps of content it's where i find links to the other pages in my vault i did away with a lot of that like fancy terminology it, it sounds all great like even the pkm method at the end of the day what does that even really mean i <laughs> pers personal knowledge ma method um you don't have to worry about all of those things just worry about what you'll remember and what stands out to you so you can call it an index you can call it your table of contents whatever resonates with you to give you an idea of my directories right now i have my home canvas i'm sort of playing with um a giant canvas space for all of my maps of content so that i can see them all um but for right now i call it home one and then i have my home map of content um, my business map of content and then my you know side business map of content but these are the two areas that i work in so i wanted to make sure that i had a map, map of content for each of them next i have my areas for nick milo it was called his spaces and it was his last area my areas are i guess others have called their project or different resources my main areas are content creation my personal journal my meeting notes people and companies and um, my links to my OneNote files so that if there are any main notes in OneNote that I find myself going to often, I can just access them from right here in the vault. I also have different maps of content within my OneNote program that I can use to maneuver around. But the goal here was just to um, keep this down to the things that I'm really accessing regularly that I want to see easily and that I, I use often. Um, spaces didn't, you know, space, for me, the word spaces and areas, it's all the same. But for me, spaces as an architect, spaces actually have a <laughs> specific, it has a different connotation. So for me, I just use areas. What are the areas? What area do I want to work in today? Am I working in content creation? Am I doing my personal journal? Or is it a meeting that I have? I did not have a calendar area because like I said, I use Google Calendar for my main calendar stuff. And then my OneNote planner is like my backup to that. So I didn't need to have a calendar area. Um, in my areas, I have my personal journal. That is really the only thing that I would put in here and have specific dates. But like I said, I use Obsidian. I use Obsidian mostly for um, like, it's almost as if I've written something down in a physical planner and then I, I transfer it over into digital. But if it's, I'm actually already doing it in digital. Sometimes I will just open up a fleeting note straight. Like if I'm doing a personal journal or a quote, I'll just put it into fleeting notes. Also, if I'm working off of my phone and which is a little bit hard to maneuver, it's not as, as streamlined as working on the desktop. So if I'm putting a note on my phone, I'll create a fleeting note in Obsidian or OneNote on my phone. And then I'll just pick it up here on my desktop. My areas are the place where a calendar would go if I was going that route, but I didn't. So I just did away with the calendar section. I believe cards were like our version of Zettocasting. As I've seen it described, cards is where there's like an equivalent between areas. So your spaces were like the different areas of your life, your personal life and your work life. I am the owner of most of my businesses. They all blend together. And one of the reasons why I switched to Obsidian was so that I could more easily find connections in my work because a lot of the work that I do is similar. It's a lot of knowledge work. Um, there are concepts that permeate multiple um, areas of my life. You know, if I'm speaking about confidence, there's 
what I'm learning about confidence in my own personal life that would go into my personal journal. There might be points or topics that I'm teaching about confidence to other content creators. And then in the Boss Ladies program, I'm also training on confidence and in my coaching, finding notes that I can share with my coaching clients. So confidence is like a, a thread that weaves through every area of my life. So I didn't, I, I didn't need a folder for personal and work. It was just enough for me to put pers all the personal and work stuff into the one folder. For me, projects depended more on the type of work. You know, I might be working on a project within architectural design. I would just create an architecture area and put it in there. Um, if I'm working on a project in the boss ladies for the boss ladies program, maybe it's a an event or a meetup, then I would just put that into the boss ladies area. So the next area that I have are resources. So resources are basically anything that is not originally mine. Like if it's coming from outside, it comes into here as a, re a resource. So um, any external links, uh, Twitter, manuals and guides that I'm saving, posts and comments, like instead of creating a literature page for a link that just sends me out to a direct website, let's say a, a video on Obsidian or Zettelkasten or something like that, where I don't have highlights and notes, but I, I, I literally just need the link to the resource. That's anything in here, something that I would click and that it would take me to somewhere else. Like if I just wanted to capture and save the link, you can also do that in, um, like your bookmarks in your browser. The, the problem with the browser is that everything you save goes in one folder. By saving it into Obsidian, I can then use my tags to link that thing to multiple stuff. For example, I might attend a woman in tech conference as a speaker, in which case I would have project notes for what I was preparing as my speech. I might attend as an attendee, and then I would have conference notes and those notes would have to link to other things so i would create my notes i would link it to this link for that program and i would just have the link saved so manuals and guides posts and comments resources things i'm inspired by tweets women in tech conferences those are all external in my references and sources you'll see i have you know another set of overall ideas so my articles, my books, conferences, films, music, podcasts, poems and shorts, quotes, sermons, training courses, and videos. These are just some categories that I find myself capturing a lot of different information in and I just want to be able to come in here and find the thing. But resources is pretty straightforward. Next I have my settings which are my attachments and my templates. Um, the, my attachments are basically my images. My templates you'll see are templates that I use for when I'm creating stuff. So those are my outlines. My reference templates are the templates that I use when I'm creating specific notes. Some of them, you know, each one is slightly different. Um, for example, my if I'm taking a course, I want to note who's hosting the course, um, who the speaker or the instructor, instructor was, any notes and any resources. Whereas if I am doing a literature note for my Zettelkasten, then I'm looking more for, um, you know, who's the author, where's the source. Some things to kind of get me thinking about the item a little bit differently. If I'm doing a quote, um, then I don't need, for example, the host and speaker because it's just a quote. I just need the quote and the author. I sort of just have these categories, person or company. It's really straightforward, but just some details about the person, the hashtag. I also try to include the hashtags that I want to use, um, especially when I'm beginning to do a note so that I can remember what hashtags I want to use. Um, I have my map of content. All of my map of contents I want to link to the home canvas and um, the previous map of content. So right now, all of my map of contents are basically going on their home. I don't have a third or fourth level, but I would basically just make these two links. Like how do I, you know, as my links expand, I just have a link so I can get all the way back up to the top or so I can go like one level up. And then in each level, I'll be able to go either all the way up to the top or just one level up. And then I have a little reminder, you know, the benefit of a map of content is that you can put a little bit of, uh, of information in there. And then I have a little space for any map of content that's related, um, any related concepts, so that I can link my map of maps of content to each other. And these items that are inserts, these are things that, um, I'm not really a coder, so there are things that I don't remember, but there's anything that I enter 
often that I don't want to have to remember what it is. In this case, it's the underline because I cannot remember what the code was to do underline in Obsidian. I just saved it as an insert. So I have insert underline, I have insert tweet. These are the things that I would just insert into an existing page. To save myself time in entering the code, it's there. I have my, my regular Zettle dip template and then some just links to help me when I'm <laughs> keep an overall view of how I organize my, my systems and my process. So that lives in my decision log and my obsidian shortcuts. Decision log is actually something that I'll show you. Um, it works better in OneNote. So I decided to just make work on my decisions in OneNote and then bring them over into obsidian once I've finalized what it is that I'm thinking, you know, sort of organize the thought process. But I also have some questions that I find helpful when it comes to making a decision, just as a reminder for myself. So this is less of a template that I use, like these items with the little dash in the title. They're not so much templates that I would use by inserting or creating notes for. They're more of a template on how I process or create information. It's like, it's the template for the template. So um, those are my templates. And then finally, I have my Zettelkasten, which is the sixth item on my list. And Zettelkasten is where I keep what some people call, call cards or Zettles, but anything in the Zettelkasten area is a thought that I have come up with myself. Let's bring our attention to the right side of the screen. So on this side, you'll see my links. This is what my, um, my view looks like now. I really just like to see it every once in a while, just to see the progress that I'm making as I add notes. But for the most part, I have it listed here um, as my headings. And if you want to see your headings, you just put in a pound sign and then you'll have your headings. So for some of my larger notes, I have headings and the headings just helps you to jump around. And then these are my tags. So in my tags area, I've also sort of kept my tags very limited because I found in the past the tags just sort of got out of hand. And then I started to have duplicate and repeat tag. One of the benefits that I found in Obsidian is the connections that you can make using links. So for the most part in my Zettles, this is basically a page that I have in my, my notebook. I mean, you can see how the template sort of played out, but what I'll use is that double bracket and then I'll type in whatever it is that I, I wanted to write. And that's how I link my ideas and my pages together. My tags have become more organizational. So it helps me know what the category of note is. So this, this um, card or Zettel, whatever you want to call it, is a good example because this is actually from a book I read. So I've linked that book here as a resource. Um, there are some categories that I work on. I for now, these are not pages that I've actually created, but they're pages that I intend to create because I tend to have a lot of work around them. But I didn't want to have a hashtag for them because I want to create a page and I want to have maps of content and I want to look at them as a, a way to capture information on in a, a list view or on a page view. So um, the tag that I have here is reference. Now I said earlier that everything in my Zettelkasten is something that came from me that is a thought that I've processed, but here I have a, a card or but or a, car, a card or a zettel that says reference. Why? Because these are reference notes that I've pulled from the book that I've put here, but it's not um, it's not a quote or something that I've just copied and pasted. I've sort of thought about it and summarized it and started to think about it in a different way. So you can see here, you know, it's a definition and not sure it should be a reference slash definition. So um, it's basically what is a domino habit. It's a habit that makes the rest of your behavior happen automatically. Um, it hinges on temporal landmarks, blah, blah, blah. And then what's a temporal landmark? There's another definition and I can just change this to reference slash definition. Um, and a temporal landmark, what is it connected to? Overwhelming information information overload, productivity. This is actually a note. And if I control hover, it'll bring me to the note and I can see the notes about what overwhelming information overload are, where I got them from, et cetera, et cetera. So that's how I start to link my notes together within the note. So I use links so that it kind of creates like a, a thought process, a thought chain. 
And I find that actually works for me better because if I'm in the Domino Habits note, I'm not looking through a list of all notes that are related to Domino Habits. I'm looking at this note, I'm reading about it, I'm learning about it. If I wanna expand my knowledge of it, then I can control hover. Well, these are not, these are notes that I don't have. I can control hover and I can see the information that's connected to it. I can kind of expand on it. And then if I want to, I can click and I can go in and I can, you know, basically go down the rabbit hole. My, my links and my, in my hashtags, my links are links to either overall concepts and themes, other Zettelkasten, other reference notes. Um, like for example, um, I try to link either books to books or thoughts to thoughts. And then my resources will tend to be like where I got that information from. So if it's something that's up here in links, then it's an idea or a item that is connected. And if it's down here in resources, then that's where I, you know, where I got that information from. Now over in my hashtags, you'll see that I have something that's similar to my organization on the left hand side, but slightly different. So here in my folders, I have people and companies together, but in the right hand side, I have a link for companies. I have a link for content creation, um, a link for items that I want to exclude. I'm playing around with that because in Obsidian, you can also exclude an entire folder but um, I have exclude for anything that is not in a folder that I'm excluding, but just like one file that I don't want to be included in anything else. I have my ideas, my meetings, my map of contents, a list of items that have no links, people, uh, personal stuff, and my reference stuff. So you might ask, why do I have reference and resources differently? For example, a personal journal note, that would go into my personal journal folder but maybe there's an idea in there that is a reference idea. Maybe it's something that somebody told me, that somebody said to me, that I've captured in my personal journal as the original place that it came into, but it's actually a reference to something else. My resources are really for the thing that I'm experiencing. So if I'm reading a book and I've highlighted the notes in the book, that would go into my resources. If I'm thinking about the book now, an idea comes to my head, and I reference back to that resource, um, then I would go back and I would capture a link to that original item and then I would drop it in. But you'll see like with Domino Habits, it's not a resource, it's an idea that I'm thinking about, but the Domino Habits is a definition that I would refer to. So it, it goes into the, the reference category. So um, under my reference categories, I have articles, books, definitions, external links, film, how to, podcasts, poems, quote, you know, basically any sources of information. Um, X miscellaneous is basically where things go until they have a category um, of links here. So for a while, items that were under podcasts, um, poems, and how to for a while, you can see they don't really have a lot of notes affiliated with them. So for the most part, I didn't at the time feel the need to create a category for them. So those were things that I would just drop into miscellaneous. Um, but recently I, I've been starting to listen to podcasts. So I have some other notes that need to go into here. There are a couple of poems that I want to add um, that I've gotten information from. Those will go in here too. But there's like, there are another four things in X miscellaneous that don't necessarily fit into any of these categories, or maybe I don't necessarily want them in those categories because I want them to be a part. So they say in X miscellaneous and I just put the X in the beginning. So it goes to the bottom of the list. Um, with books, if it's a book that I reference to a lot, which in this case is the Bible, that gets its own um, little hashtag. And right now I'm sort of playing with whether or not I even wanna keep a hashtag for Bible stuff because you see that I'm getting some overlap where a sermon is gonna refer to the Bible. So all of my sermon notes are re referencing the Bible. The place where it comes into um, a different, where it begins to make a difference is there sometimes I'm capturing my own thought or um, in a, another say non-religious book that I'm reading, I'll read it and I'll link it. Here's something I journaled about that is connected to the Bible, but it wasn't a sermon that I attended or listened to. A lot of my notes, my my journal, my goals, um, they'll often refer to a Bible verse or a Bible story. So sometimes there are things that are going into my personal journal that aren't a 
a sermon that I listened to, which is a resource, but it's more related to the Bible. So I have connected it to personal journal. Now, the other option for me for that is to maybe not link sermons to the Bible, but I just, I just didn't want to rule out the Bible. But as you can see here from this giant mass that is developing in this area, these two are both very closely related and they are the majority of the notes that I have now because those are the notes that I've imported. I haven't gotten to my class notes yet, but it's sort of creating this huge double icon item. Going back to my link. So I have reference in personal. I have my goals, my journal principles. Principles are things that I keep revisiting in my life that stand out, um, things that I want to remember, um, things that I want to focus on that I don't necessarily, maybe it's an idea that I journaled, like how I want to live or what my goals are, but it's not a goal like I want to be able to do this. Maybe it's more of a, a life goal. Um, sometimes it's something that I captured that I heard from someone else on, on in terms of something that you want to strive towards in your life. Those are just things that come up as principles. These are also sometimes things that I might want to teach on or share in my coaching program. And then my thoughts are just random that I think about. A lot of my zettles are tagged with thoughts because it's something that I've come up with and maybe I read something and it sparked an idea, but it's not necessarily me linking two ideas together. It's the third thing that results from me gathering those two things. Or I'll, you know, just come up with something and I'll, I'll note it down. That will go under the th thoughts category and in my zettle casting. But sometimes, for example, I might be sitting in a class or listening to a sermon or even just listening to music and somebody will say something and I'll sort of jot down like an aside. So instead of just having something in brackets and italics to show that it's my thought, I'll just put like a hashtag thoughts, type what I'm thinking and then continues to take notes. Thoughts is something that you'll see is connected to a lot of different things. There are sermons that it links to, books, ideas, it's sort of a mix. And it also links to things in my personal journals. The links are connectors of ideas. Well, it's obvious, straightforward, no links. No links is an interesting category. If I'm not sure of what I should link this item to, then I'll just add that tag that says no link. You also see that when I created uh, my template for my Zettel casting, there's always that no link there. So I don't have to keep adding it. It always comes up. If I can't think of anything to connect it to right at that moment, it'll sort of stay in my no links as a reminder to process later. Um, meetings are straightforward. Ideas, ideas is a little different. Um, those are just things that I want to work on or develop later. There are things that are an idea that are, that's separate from my thoughts. Um, <laughs> thoughts are ideas, yes. But for me, an idea is something that either I'm gonna, I need to come back to to work on later, or it's something that I just wanna capture. I'm not sure if I wanna work on it and turn it into something, but it's something that I'm thinking about. It's not quite a to-do. It's really just something that I'm considering. Maybe, maybe I wanna work on it. Maybe I wanna revisit it. Just something, it's sort of like, the equivalent of a hmm so when i i'm writing and i i get to something and i'm like hmm there's a little more there there's something else i could revisit maybe i could turn this into something but i don't really know what that something is right now i'll just put a hashtag idea next to it and then i can always come back to those things and kind of see but i just i left them separately so i can have that option to come back to that idea um and then my content creation. Um, content creation is basically two things. Uh, one, it's the specific brand that I'm working with. Again, there might be overlap. So because it might overlap with something else, it, it, it's a hashtag and it's a folder. There are notes in my Zettel casting that might relate to different things that I'm working on. So this allows me to link the different brands. And then there's the content status. This kind of shows me again, is this a content idea that I wanna work on later? Is it in progress or is it something that I've published already? So the things that I've published already, um, you know, I have, is it an article? Is it a blog post? Is it a video? Or if it's in progress, same thing. Is it an article, an interview, a presentation, a video? Just so I know what the thing is that I'm working on. There are times where I'm like, okay, I need to post another video on my channel. Um, what are some of the things that I'm working on that I could just pick up on? So here are two things, two videos that are in progress. Um, interviews articles I can just come here and say okay let me pick up on where I left off 
but there are sometimes you know where brand comes in depending on which brand that I'm working with I might say okay for a search I need to do a video for Avon the brand um, so are there any videos and brands and are there any Avon videos that I need to work on you know you, you just have to think about your own workflow how you go about things and I know that that's something I often do like oh crap, you know crap I need to make a video or I need to write an article let me start let me see what I have that I've already started working on the idea areas are things that I have that I'm thinking of that I didn't really start fleshing out yet so if I come into the in progress and I find that let's say I need to make a, a video for the boss ladies network but I don't really have any videos for that category that I'm working on right now then I'll jump into ideas and see what ideas I had like brewing that I could then take and move into the next level. For anything in this content status area, I'll tag it with the possible brands that it might um, coordinate with. That way I can always, you know, use this as a search tool to narrow down what I'm working on. Let's say for the workflow, how do I go from working in OneNote and taking these random notes and moving them into Obsidian? So as I said earlier, uh, let's say I have a meeting with the person and I have notes. If it's handwritten notes, First, I will highlight, I'll tell, tell OneNote to treat the selected ink as um, handwriting. Right now that handwriting is so bad it can't even recognize it. <laughs> and then once I do that, I'll say convert ink to test. So usually there's a bit of finessing that I have to do to make it sound right. But once I have it in a, in a way that I, I like it, I'll then take it, highlight it, copy it, and then I'll come over and I'll paste it here. I would create a new note, open up the whatever your, your shortcut is. I would, let's just say I'm using a Zetto template. I would then paste my meeting note, title up here, get rid of that, add any hashtags that I need, hashtag meeting. Sometimes if it's a brand name that I meet with often, then I would choose whatever that brand name is. Um, under links, I would double bracket and then I would say whoever I'm meeting with, whatever it's related to, all of that good stuff. But my meeting note is basically done. It would be tagged and filed accordingly. For my fleeting notes, most of the things that go here in this side panel view are things that I just wanna remember to do at a later time. So if it's important, it would either go to another daily page or to another weekly page if, you know, depending on when I need to do that thing. Otherwise, most of the things that I find that are going into this right column are really just things that I need to get off my brain so I can focus on my work and the task at hand. Um, things that I can just do in my free time, like shopping, remembering to call somebody, remembering to send a follow-up email. Those are things that I could kind of just go through and check off during my day. Those aren't really things that are gonna be captured into my notes. Sometimes, occasionally, I'll have like a, a bright idea. Maybe I'm listening to a podcast or a song while I work and something comes up and that thing would be here. So in the same way that I created a meeting note, I'll just copy it, come into the note, create a new note, use my template, um, use my template. Maybe this is a quote that I heard, a quote that has no reference, that's not coming from an article that I'm reading, but a quote that somebody said that I want to keep. For this case, I would just take that thing, I would put it down here, save it as a quote, think about whether there are any links, or if there are no links, just leave it alone. If it's something that I need to come back later, then I'll do hashtag um, develop later. But this way, the friction between trying to figure out what folder it goes into or what tag it gets tagged with, I've done my best to eliminate that. And it did take some time initially because there were so many videos that are you know, trying to help you figure out what system is best to use. But really and truly the best system to use is a system that is most in line with either the way that you already work or the way that you would like to work. For me, my goal with Obsidian was to create connections between the information that I was gathering in my personal development, in the courses, trainings, sermons, lectures, workshops, um, conferences and conventions that I was attending, and the books that I was reading, the articles, the blog posts, the videos. I found that, you know, when you're interested in something, you tend to get the same information from a multitude of different resources and you use that information in different ways. You might be using it in your job as well as in your journal. And I find that there was so much overlap between the information that I was gathering, but I couldn't remember it and I couldn't find it. I'd remember that I heard this quote somewhere, but I couldn't remember what the quote was. Here, I can either use my folders or my tags to find that quote really easily. So if it's a quote that I read in a book, I could just hop into my folders, open the book and find the quote. If it's a 
a quote that I heard but I don't know what book that I, I heard it from. I can literally just do a search for some of the words from the quote and I can find where it is. Um, if it's a quote that I don't remember the words for but I remember the person who said it, there are a lot of different ways that I can find the same information whether it's folders, links, or tags but there isn't so much of any one of them that I have an abundance of tags that I have to remember. Something else that I should mention is if you want to create a tag that is like a, a sub tag of another tag, there is a plugin that I have called multi tag, but that helps you control the tag. And like you saw me do earlier, if you want to just make it a sub tag, you would just do hashtag first level forward slash the second level. And then that would create that sub category. So let's say I want it to be idea slash dev. You'll see here now that's created. Let's say I want to add another level, um, develop next year, just add another slash four level. And then it, you know, you can keep going down, 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 down. My goal is really to try to keep this tag list as narrow as possible so that if I'm thinking of, you know, uh, what am I working on? Is it content creation? Okay. I start typing content creation. I can see all the tags that I have here. Sometimes even, I don't even know, you know, maybe I can't remember what the, the original headline is, or maybe I just don't want to type out the whole thing. Let's say I, um, I read an article and I want to archive this article or, you know, I could just type hashtag article and I'll see any time, any category that I have that has that art. So I have, is it a reference article? Is it an article that I've published? Is it an article that I have that I'm working on that's in progress? You know, I can kind of see what my options are and then I can choose from the list like that. So that that's a feature that comes in handy. This is a, a system that is sort of unique to the way that I work. For me, what was important was being able to capture ideas with my tablet because I know that that's how I learn, that's how I process information. And when I'm in flow and just sort of having like a brainstorm moment, sometimes I want to type it out. Sometimes I want to write. I don't want to have this hesitation to figure out, okay, do I want to capture this note in Obsidian or do I want to capture it in OneNote? It doesn't matter where I am. I could just open something, put the information down and then figure out where to put it later. It's even gotten easier to do that because I won't even bother to delete things from my daily pages in OneNote because it doesn't overlap with Obsidian in search or anything. And there's sort of like an archive in OneNote that's like, again, that physical printed planner. And then I can also create links between Obsidian and OneNote. I can just click on architecture projects and it will actually open up a OneNote file where I can see all the things that I'm, I'm working on for that architecture project. Um, same thing with content creation. When I'm teaching a course, my notes tend not to be linear. They tend to be horizontal <laughs> it, and it helps me to just sort of give myself a bird's eye view of all the content that I'm covering. You can't build ideas horizontally, at least in my opinion, you can't do it well in Obsidian. For me, it makes it easier for me to create my course notes. Sometimes I have slides and sometimes I have images in my course notes. It's easier for me to do that in OneNote and then just link it to Obsidian. And here you can see I have my planner. This page links to my planner page. So if I want to just come back to that, the notes that I'm working on, it'll automatically just bring me here from Obsidian. So that's basically my, my workflow for Obsidian and OneNote. It's a very, very deep dive into my workflow and how all the things that I have worked together for now. It's taken me a while to work out this process because at first I did not want to completely, I didn't want to completely transition into any app or program. I think it's important to have the backlinking that Obsidian offers um, that OneNote doesn't do as well. But for me, it's also important to have that creative flow of thought so that I can just get my ideas down and then worry about where they go later. One of the biggest challenges to a, a personal knowledge management system is that there are so many different ways to do it, so many different ways that work, so many different programs that are out there that don't do exactly what you need. It becomes hard to create a system for yourself, but the only way you're gonna know is to just try. As I've created the system, um, like I said with, for example, the miscellaneous notes, I found that I was having notes that I didn't really know where they should go. And then I said, you know what? Okay, I start, I'm start. i starting to see that I have a couple of notes that are sort of similar. Maybe I need to create a, a new hashtag or maybe I need to create a new folder. But it really helped to just have an idea that first of all, I didn't want to have a lot of folders, <laughs> um, you know, to separate my ideas. And second of all, I didn't want to have a lot of hashtags to make so many individual ideas. So from the jump, I made the decision that my notes would link to each other my main separate categories wouldn't be projects or areas it would be the type of note that it is so if it's a note that's my thoughts it's basically a zettle if it's a big summary of notes that i've 
gotten from an article or a book, my highlights, um, things like that, then that's going to go in a reference category. The things that I, I touch often are closer to the top, easier to find. The things that I don't deal with so much, they can be embedded and sub embedded and, you know, sort of put to the side so that I don't see them as much so that I can collapse them if I'm not working with them as often. I try to make it so that I'm not constantly opening levels of folders like my Zettelkasten, according to other, some of these other systems would be embedded, you know, two or three levels deep. But my Zettelkasten, like the whole point of this system is that I'm constantly putting things in my Zettelkasten. So for me, that is a top level thing. My fleeting notes in my Zettelkasten are things that I frequent often. So that those things needed to be top level. My resources, it's less often um, because it's usually me processing information. And once I've processed it, I'm not really coming back to it. So if I read an article and I've highlighted and I've made notes, it's the notes that I'm going to access. And those notes are going to live in my Zettelkasten. The actual book or article I may not come back to unless I'm looking for a specific thing. So that can be a little bit deeper down in the list. But um, I might want to see how that relates to some other books or articles that I'm reading. And the way that I'll see that relationship is either through the hashtags that give them the category or through the links that they have in common. As I start to see, you know, links form, then I'll, I'll get to, to realize, and I'm already starting to realize that, um, you know, different books are linked because they have similar concepts. So some of the links that I have, just to give you an idea of how I create links, are people's names, concepts like um, like I said, confidence, a thing that I, I keep coming back to. And even if I'm not sure and I'm just trying to think, I would just kind of type and start going through, you know, anything that I'm reading and I'm starting to, I feel like it's something that might come up later. I'll just double bracket it so that I can then take that double bracket and see if it actually is something that comes up in multiple places. Like right now you see, I don't have a specific page for CS Lewis, but let's say I want to create a page. Look at that. I've already linked him in two or three different places. So when I search for this author, I'll find any quotes that I have for him, as well as where I got those quotes, which also exists inside the specific quote, because then I could just follow that link and come back. So it's the same information. Again, it's just the importance of being able to find that same information in different places. So if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you like seeing videos like this, make sure that you subscribe. So uh, my name is Georgiana Haynes and I'll see you soon. Bye.